Good morning, St. Catharines. I hope you're all doing well. Um, before we get started, uh, let's just have a moment to pause and just allow the Lord to just still our minds from whatever might be distracting us from him and hearing his voice. So let's just take a moment and some quiet. Ezekiel 18, 27 says, When the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. Psalm 51, verse 3 says, I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with a humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, Yet ought we most chiefly so to do, when we assemble and meet together, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and a humble voice, and to the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and have done those things which we ought not to have done. There is no health in us, but thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind. In Christ Jesus our Lord, and grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Grant, we beseech thee, merciful Lord, to thy faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve thee with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let's pray through Psalm 95 together. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills are his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works, forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is the people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Well, this morning's psalm comes from out of Psalm 119, beginning at verse 137. The righteous art thou, O Lord, and true is thy judgment. The testimonies that thou hast commanded are exceeding righteous and true. My zeal hath even consumed me, because mine enemies have forgot, forgotten thy words. Thy word is tried to the uttermost, and thy ser servant loveth it. I am small, and of no reputation, yet do I not forget thy commandments. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. Trouble and heaviness have taken hold of, hold upon me. It is my delight in thy commandments. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. O grant me understanding, and I shall live. Amen. And this morning's Bible reading comes from Romans 8. Um, it's verses 26 through 39. It says, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. So what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, was also raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble and hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for, you, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. My goodness. Paul could write. It's, it's hard to write a sermon on passages like this, because how could I ever describe the love that God has for us in a way that comes anywhere near Paul's description of God's love for us? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us. And because of this, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. There's absolutely nothing then in all of creation that can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume that uh, for most of us, we probably don't struggle too much with the concept that God love, loves us. We're comfortable and like the idea that God, the creator of heaven and earth, knows us and he cares for us that he loves us yeah we may not always feel like we're loved by god 
and from time to time we may even doubt that he does. But I would think for the most part, and I could be wrong on this, I've been wrong a few times before, but I would, I would guess that most of us don't really struggle with the idea that if there is a God, he is a God that loves us. But what Paul was writing here, I don't think it's, it's quite that simple. Because, yeah, we like the idea that God loves us and cares for us. But I don't think Paul was simply saying that God didn't even spare his own son just so that we would know that we are loved by him. But, but rather, he longs for us to be transformed in our very nature and character at the very core of who we are to become like his son, the one who he chose not to be spared, and he chose the cross. It's beginning in verse 28, Paul writes, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. So God's desire is that we all be conformed to the image of his Son. I don't know about you, but I like the idea that there's this big and powerful God out there that loves me. But it's a whole other thing when this God calls you to love others the way that he loves us. His love for us was perfectly exhibited through his son, the one that he did not spare, but gave him up for us, for us all. And his son, Jesus, perfectly exhibited God's love for us because he willfully chose not to be spared out of his love for God the Father and his love for us. And I don't know, maybe it's enough to just accept the fact that God loves us and that he's willing to give up so much for us. And maybe it's fine to accept all that and just carry on with life. I mean, what really can we do with this information? And I, I guess you can just sit back and thank him for his blessings. Because he's shown, too, that he's still going to love us, no matter how we respond to his love. So we could. We could take the easy path and just carry on with life as usual. There's something about this image of his love that should compel us to seek to know this God that loves us so dearly. God didn't just choose you because he wanted you to know that he loves you. But rather he chose to reveal his, his love to you through Jesus so that you would be conformed to the image of his son. You're not just loved, but you've been called. You have a calling on your life to bear the image of Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I can't do that. I can just about bear uh, being a halfway decent image of a good father and a husband. But to bear the image of Jesus, there's no chance. It's impossible for me to be able to do that. In the beginning verses of this morning's reading, Paul wrote, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. So you're right. There's absolutely no way that we can bear the image of Christ out of our own strength or will or determination. But Christ sent the Helper, the Holy Spirit. In John 15, verse 12, Jesus says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. 
And then just a few sentences later in that same conversation, Jesus tells them that the Holy Spirit will come to them. He said, it's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. The Holy Spirit is our strength, where we are weak. And he intercedes for us. He cries out for us on our behalf. He convicts us of our wrongdoings, and he draws our gaze towards the righteousness of Jesus. We haven't been called to love as the world loves. We're not being transformed into a slightly nicer version of the world. But the Holy Spirit, if you're sensitive to his voice and his leading, is transforming us to love as Jesus loved. A love that is completely sacrificial. A love that doesn't expect anything in return and will always elevate others above yourself. So Lord, have your way in our lives. Expose and strip away our pride, our hard-heartedness, our fears, whatever it is that's hindering us from living out what you've called us to be, bearers of the image of Jesus. We don't want to be the ones who just happily receive your love and your blessings and not be transformed by them. We want to love what you love the way that you love. So Holy Spirit, as scary as it may be to pray this, have your way in our lives. Amen. Well, let's continue by praying through Psalm 100 together. Oh, be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth is endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let's proclaim the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee, and do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The collect for today is the seventh Sunday after Trinity. Lord, of all power and might, who art the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of thy name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of thy great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by the governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, high and mighty, King of kings, Lord of lords, the ruler, only ruler of princes, who does from thy throne behold all the do thy dwellers upon earth. Most heartily we beseech thee with thy favor to behold our most gracious sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, and so replenish her with the grace of thy Holy Spirit, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way, and do her plenteously with heavenly gifts, grant her in health and wealth long to live. Strengthen her, that she may vanquish and overcome all her enemies. And finally, after this life, she may attain everlasting joy and felicity. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Charles, Prince of Wales, and all the royal family. And do them with thy Holy Spirit, enrich them with thy heavenly grace, prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone worketh great marvels, send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the healthful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honor of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord, to make our common supplication unto thee, and thus promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Now we're near the end of our time of worship together, but let's continue with, with song, um, And Can It Be?
saying the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.